Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Reaper Minis TV. We'll get right into the reviews this time, starting off with some Cowboy and Indian or Wild West suited miniatures. These first two are from the Chronoscope line, and starting off with Buck Fannin. He's a cowboy, single piece miniature here. He's carrying a shotgun, has a long duster on, and a cowboy hat. Even though it's partially hidden by his hat, I think the face and the expression on the face is probably the best part of the miniature, or the most outstanding part of the miniature. He has a grim, determined look on his face. Uh, you can see there is going to be some cleaning needed on the figure. The mold line is fairly visible, and it's going down the side of his coat, so it should be fairly easy to smooth out. A little bit harder on his hat, because there's less area just to be able to smooth it out on there, but not too much of a problem. Here you can see a little more up-close detail of the face, and you can see on his shirt there's a chain for his pocket watch that goes back under his coat, so a nice little bit of added detail there. Next up we have Hank Callahan, who's a gunslinger. He's also a single-piece miniature. Hank needed about as much cleaning as the previous guy we looked at, but not really too much. You're going to spend a minute or two doing some cleaning on here, picking off the little bits of extra metal and taking care of any mold lines, so nothing way out of the ordinary. He has some different detail than the previous one when we looked at Buck Fannin, but he's got pistols, he's got actually two pistols, one in each hand, and then he has two holsters on his belt, and one of them still contains uh, another pistol. So he's got at least three pistols to take care of business here with. The holster on his left side is going to be empty. But added details, you can see the buckle on his belt, the buttons on his shirt, the face is again very well done. So another good Wild West figure here. And then our last Wild West figure for this time around is going to be Andrew Lane. He is nicknamed the Ghost. I don't know why he's called the Ghost. I don't know if he's really a ghost or he just shows up from out of nowhere and people call him the Ghost. This one is going to be a two-piece figure where you've got the shotgun that is cast on the casting tab along with the rest of the figure, so you'll need to clip that off and put it into place. It fits onto his right wrist and then rests over the backside of his shoulders, and assembly is not really going to be a big deal at all. I don't think you need to pin it. I think some super glue is going to hold it into place just fine. As far as cleaning, he needed about as much as the other two. The mold lines were visible, need to be scraped or shaved down a little bit. There were also some little bits of extra flash, most notably you can see there on his elbow and also on his hat. But again, details are very good. His bow tie is really nicely done. Those kinds of things will stand out when painting it, and it's another good Wild West figure here. We're going to jump back to the chronoscope line for a second, and this is Marie Ashibot. It's a single piece figure and you can see there's a pretty significant amount of flash that you'll need to clean off the model from the casting process, but all of these little bits that are sticking out should be able to be clipped right off with a sharp X-Acto knife or a, a hobby blade or something like that. Now, when I originally saw the figure, it made me think of the Fembots from Austin Powers. But then the more I had it and the more I, I looked at the figure, it reminds me more of the robot in the movie Metropolis. So do a quick Google or Bing or whatever search, and I think you'll see that she looks a lot like that. As far as uses for the figure, I think you could get a pretty decent amount of mileage out of it using it as a droid in a Star Wars or other sci-fi kind of game, or even in a superhero game, maybe as a player character that's an android or some kind of artificial being. Here from the Pathfinder line, we have a single piece figure called a Master Spy. It's a female who's wearing what looks like a ball gown and a mask from a masquerade, but she also has a very long dagger that she's carrying in both of her hands. Now, my first thought of this, and this is probably because I'm getting started in Malifaux and I'm building a resurrectionist crew, I was thinking of using her as an addition to the rotten bells that I'll be taking into my crew. But then I second guess that a little bit. I'm not sure if the dagger really works with the rest of the rotten bells because they don't really carry weapons. They're just undead ladies of the night, and she, on the, the Master Spy figure, she has large ears that are coming out the sides of her head, so she's probably some kind of elf. Now, I could paint the ears as part of the mask and just make that part of her costume, but then I really don't know if it fits in with the rest of the Rotten Bells. So, Otherwise, I think it would be a very good figure if you had a heavy role-playing campaign or even just one player in your party that's a heavy role-playing character like an elven envoy or somebody that has a lot of dealings with the upper class in whatever your campaign is. 
And then to round out this episode, we have two figures from the Dark Heaven Legends line. The first one is Garzul. He's a Mantis Man Ranger. This is a two-piece figure where you're going to have to do a little bit of cleaning and a little bit of assembly and spend a little bit of time actually getting it to assemble properly. And it's more just because it, it fits together in a little bit of a... Not difficult, but I found it to be a little bit of an awkward way. So here's a look at the pieces of the figure. You can see the front and back of the body. He's carrying a bow and has a quiver down on his hip. And then the top half of the figure, he's got two arms that are carrying... Um, almost they look they almost look like stone hatchets or tomahawks now the two pieces go together sort of up on where the two sets of shoulders would meet and it's a little bit awkward to show you here but this is how it looks i would put him on a base after getting it glued together just to add some stability to the model but I think if you're playing in a Dark Sun campaign and you want to use an insect type race or maybe in Gamma World, I think you could use this figure. You could pull off the hatchets and put blaster pistols or something in his hands there if you wanted to. It might be a little bit harder of a conversion to get him work in a typical sci-fi game if you're going to pull the bow out of his hand because you still have the quiver down on his hip. And then last up we have Troya, a female warrior and she very obviously looks like a female Trojan warrior and that in itself is a little bit out of place or maybe a lot out of place but you could use her as a female warrior who's very decidedly playing against the stereotype of whatever society she comes from this is a single piece figure with a helmet on you can see lots of armor she has a breastplate on heavy leggings and arm protection she's got plates up by the shoulders has a long cape and then a sword in her right hand and you can see there's going to be a little bit of cleaning necessary where there's some metal from the casting process that goes from the bottom of her sword down to the base um, not going to take you a real long time to take care of that now the figure is fine there's really no problems with it it just maybe doesn't really seem to have a place at least in my campaigns that I play in uh, it's a historical looking figure that maybe wouldn't fit in so well into a historical game with normal stereotypes and things that you'd play with there um, in a fantasy game having female warriors is all fine and good but maybe you don't have the same historical kind of element in those games so it just seems to me to be a figure that you'll need a very specific use for. Alright everybody, thanks for watching this episode of Reaper Minis TV. We'll see you with more reviews soon.